Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the broadcast. I'm your host, Josh Reeves. It is Thursday, August 15th, 2019. And uh, back here with you again for another edition of the show. So glad you could join me yet again for more. Yes, more. You're just a fucking glutton for fucking punishment, aren't you? You just keep on coming back for more. You know it's going to be some shit. You know it is. You still come back for more. What's that say about you? <laughs> I'm fucking around. What's that say about me? I keep fucking doing this shit. Looking at it every day. God damn. I can't stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. I can't. Uh. Oh, Jesus. This shit. Just, <laughs> I, I, I've been experiencing a high lo- higher level of... Uh, <clears throat> What's the term? Um, <laughs> there's really no, I don't know what the term is. Brain shut down, I guess. I, I don't know. Blue screen of death for my brain. Oh, shit, man. Lately, it's just been like one right after the other. I have to like get up and go walk around and get some air. Jesus Christ, how fucking much deeper can it get? Oh, much. Oh, much. It continues to get fucking even crazier. Insane shit, man. <laughs> and uh, I, I always know. It's always, I always know when I'm on the right path. And I'm on the right track with some info. You know, I can do shows and put out movies, do whatever. I can do stuff for long periods of time and never hear a peep out of anybody, you know. And then as soon as I start getting onto some new information, I start noticing weirdos start coming out of the woodworks, people that have never commented, commented before. All of a sudden, they've got opinions. They never had any before. So we got to start coming out of nowhere. It, it's a small amount, but still, I've noticed it. Specifically, since I've been on to this, this new new research. So, listen, if you don't like what I'm putting out, and you don't and and you don't like where I'm going, don't fucking listen. Fuck off and never come back. I don't give a fuck. But whether you want to believe it or not. What I've stumbled onto here is the truth. And there's so much more. You think I've given you 1.1% of the evidence yet? No, I've done maybe two, three shows on this stuff yet. And I haven't scratched the surface of the information. But yet again, more shit. But even since then, more stuff has come out. And uh, I mean, I think maybe, it's, it's wild. It's crazy. There's so much more stuff that's happened and come out. That's our, that's already verified and confirmed what we found here. So it's, uh, yeah, it's getting, it's getting interesting. The one that came out was yesterday morning or day before. I can't remember. New York Post, Jeffrey Epstein's sex slave seen at Naomi Campbell's birthday party in 2001. Well, welcome to the party, mainstream media. It only took you, what, two, three weeks? How long ago was it when I put out that first video, Naomi Campbell's birthday party? And I can tell you, then, two weeks ago, nobody else was onto this. I did multiple searches on multiple search engines and on YouTube for videos titled uh, with anything or anything at all, really, with the title Naomi Campbell's birthday party when I put together that video. And other than there being footage from her actual birthday party on YouTube, there was nothing else written about this. As, uh, nothing uh, in terms of connecting it to Epstein. So, without question, I was the first person to put together the Naomi Campbell, other than we already knew she was on the uh, Alila Express passenger manifest. But other than that, there was nobody was really saying anything or thinking she was any, and they really aren't thinking she's anything connected to this, I don't think, up to this point. But 
hopefully that's going to change. But yeah, there's, you know, here's, you know, I just was blown away by this when this came out. There's the fact that it says in the title of the article, you know, sex slave seen at Naomi Campbell's birthday party in 2001. Um, so there you go. I mean, once again, staying ahead of the mainstream media as per usual, but Jesus, the stuff that's just come out even since then, all this other newer stuff that's been coming out. I've got so many fucking tabs open. I'll never be able to get through all the shit I've got. (laughs) It's insane. There's a ton here. I'm trying to figure out which one I want to talk about first. So I talked about last week or in the previous shows, I talked about the whole connection to uh, the UFC, Russia, both factions of the Russian mafia. I talked about these MMA fighters being employed for private security details for these Russian oligarchs. And uh, it's interesting because the ones that we discussed pertain to that older, more right-wing end of the Russian mafia and I talked about uh, Colby Covington. Now he had the Trumps there and all that stuff. This comes out today. Jeffrey Epstein's former bodyguard claims pedophile had quote unquote help killing himself and warns of big trouble asking questions about financiers' ties to local cops during paranoid interview in which he retracts previous quotes about underage girls. Igor Zinanovev, a former UFC fighter, previously worked as Epstein's bodyguard. This is what I've been, this is the point I've been trying to make. You do have these different factions within the the Russian mafia that certainly some lean left, some some lean right. But again, the whole reason why they weren't ever going to let any of this stuff come out about Russia to begin with, because both sides, left, right, center, doesn't matter. They're all implicated. What they don't want people finding out is exactly how much power these people have, specifically not only over the political processes of the United States, they have a huge, the stuff they've done with social media, uh, the creation of Bitcoin to uh, help their money laundering activities. It's amazing how many so-called truthers and all those people jumped all over the Bitcoin thing. You guys bought into all that, engineered by Russia. The whole 9-11 truth movement, all that stuff was engineered by Russia. Why do you think they had Jones and fucking his butt boy, uh, Luke Radowski, the creator of We Are Change? Looks like fucking Vladimir Putin's son. And yes, uh, I, I had talked about that before, but somebody, a, a commenter brought it up last week. Yeah, the stuff about the, I wish I knew more about it, but. Yeah, I mean, there was. I, I remember hearing that 10, 15 years ago. The stories about, because uh, I've talked about that, all the stuff that was in the bottom of the World Trade Center. I remember three days after 9 11, I read a news in, in, remember newspapers? Remember when actually little people still read those? Print newspapers? I was reading an actual fucking print newspaper a few days after 9 11, and it's, it talked about how the, uh, what was it? The, uh, not the ATF, was it the DEA? The DEA had some kind of master vault in uh, in the basement of the of one of the twin towers, and then inside this master vault is where they kept all the large quantities of every kind of drug that they confiscated. Whether they you know they busted some big cartel guy or something. So there were supposedly billions of dollars worth of drugs. And I remember I remember my friends were going, "Hey man, let's." Let's go volunteer. Let's go volunteer to clean up down there and see if we can get into the vault. Man, you motherfuckers are crazy. 
But there was nothing else. I never heard anything else about it after after that. Not a, not a peep. I've I've tried to research and find stuff on it since then. Never been able to find anything about it. But it was in the newspaper. And uh, another one of the things that was talked about around that time too that I read was that um, there was some sort of uh, bond receipts that were stored in one of the vaults in the World Trade Center, and that uh, these bond receipts showed the proof of funding by the Russian oligarchs that we've been talking about that are now in charge and how they, they funded the overthrow of the communist Soviet Union so that they themselves could take power just like they did. Everything you, you everything you've been fed is a lie. Even that you've been, even the stuff that you've been told about there and these people that are still believing Russia is no threat and Russia somehow our enemy. You guys have bought the lie, man. You guys, and don't get pissed off at me because you bought the lie and I'm not buying it anymore. I bought into it too at some point, but I've been awake to this Russia stuff a lot longer than most people have. All this, this, this left, right, divide and conquer stuff, the race stuff, it's all been engineered by Russia. Every bit of it. So here we see again, yet again, more proof of the bullshit of the whole left-right thing. These guys on both sides, doesn't matter if they're left-wingers or right-wingers, they're all in bed with the Russia thing. Here we go. Fucking former UFC fighter. So we talked, again, we talked about those guys that were bodyguards, they were for the right-wing Russian oligarchs. Here we see, just like I told you with the whole... uh, division within the UFC itself. Why Rogan was nowhere to be found on when the Trumps were there. So you got this, you, you, here's a former UFC fighter that worked for Epstein as a bodyguard. Igor Zinovive, who is a former UFC fighter, worked as Epstein's bodyguard and driver for about six years around the time the billionaire pleaded guilty in Florida to soliciting an underage girl for prostitution. In an interview with New York Magazine following Epstein's apparent suicide, Zinovev said he believes the 66-year-old had help ending his life. He also retracted previous comments he had made in 2015 about Epstein's association with teenage girls and refused to say whether he had been contacted by the FBI in the wake of his death. Somebody helped him do that, he said, when asked what he thought about Epstein's death in federal custody. He wouldn't elaborate on how that might have happened, saying, listen, you know, that's going a little too deep. See right there, he knows. Zinoviev was one of the was the one who drove Epstein to and from the Palm Beach jail where he served his thirteen month sentence in two thousand eight after being allowed out on work release. He also drove him to various appointments in Palm Beach, flew on his plane to New York and the Virgin Islands and trained in weightlifting and body combat. Zinoviev said he stayed in Epstein's guest house when they were in Palm Beach. In an unpublished 2015 interview with the same reporter, he spoke about Epstein's relationship with underage girls and how he would rotate them constantly. He said during that interview that he often saw teenage girls at Epstein's house even after he was convicted and that he tried to stop his boss. Yeah. So many times I tried to stop him. Sure you did, lying ass. Yeah, that's what a bodyguard's hired to do. He's hired to... If he sees his boss doing something he doesn't think is right, he's he's hired to tell him bullshit. You're hired to make sure nobody stops him. Don't try to play innocent in this, Mr. UFC bodyguard guy. Everybody knows what a paid thug like you is there to do and has to turn a blind eye and to make sure that nobody stops the boss from doing what he's doing and to keep your mouth shut about it. So many times I try to stop him. I try to tell him my opinion about that. He don't listen to me. That's the reason why I'm not working for him no more. Goomba fucking rush, rush, rusky voice. When questioned this week about his previous comments, Zinoviev denied ever saying that Epstein had relationships with teenage girls. Plenty of time when I work for him, I never see anything improper with teenage girls around him. I never see teenage girls in my life at his house. That's what it is. That's a misunderstanding. Yeah, but you said it already, dumb. It's like we already don't, we don't already know. Come on. 
So once again, there's another little piece of the puzzle. Epstein had a fucking UFC bodyguard. God, I bet you motherfuckers were hoping I wouldn't find that. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Oh, oh it's not done. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein's gal pal, Gilsane Maxwell, spotted an In-N-Out burger in first photo since his death. She's at the In-N-Out burger just in plain sight. And uh, guess what book she happens to be reading? She's, there's a picture over here. She's reading a book. She's in and out, sitting outside. And this is the name of the book she's reading, you know. <laughs> the Book of Honor, The Secret Lives and Deaths of CIA Operatives. <laughs> ah! Oh, God damn. I'm busting gut laughing over here. Oh, this shit is comedy. This is pure fucking comedy right here. I wonder, I wonder why she'd have interest in that subject. I, I, I don't know. I can't guess. I can't put it together. It's too much of a mystery for me. I don't know why. Why on earth would she, would she be interested in that kind of subject matter? Hmm. I just don't know. <laughs> the book of water, the secret lives and deaths of CIA operatives. Wow. Well, it's, that's, uh, that's interesting reading, considering the things that are going on right now. Especially someone for someone like her. Wow. It just continues to fucking b- balloon, doesn't it? I mean, who wasn't hanging out with Epstein? At this point, Epstein, whatever. Who wasn't hanging out with him? Bill Gates met with Jeffrey Epstein in 2013 to discuss ways a billionaire pedophile could increase his philanthropic, philanthropic spending after he, after he was released from prison. As it emerges, they also traveled together on the Lolita Express. Now, that's hilarious. Now, now Jeffrey, just uh, let me tell you. Let me get, I just want to give you a few ideas on, on ways that you can um, contribute more of your money to charity. Um, how do you get after you get out of the hoose gal for, uh, for being a pet ass? You imagine? I mean, again, that's one thing for him, you know, again, who didn't hang out with this guy, but when you give somebody like Bill Gates is get, who clearly knows he's a criminal and he's telling, you know, Hey, here's, here's ways you can, you can give more to charity after you get out of the hoose gal for being a fucking sex pervert pedophile jesus bill gates met with jeffrey epstein back in 2013 to talk about philanthropy four years after the billionaire pedophile had served time for soliciting a minor under the age of 18 for sex the pair had at least one meeting in new york in 2013 when gates was still chairman of microsoft the meeting came the same year that gates hitched a ride with epstein on his private plane the lolita express from new jersey to florida you know um, I, I mean, that, see, that's that's weird because I mean, Bill Gates didn't ride, <laughs> didn't hitch a fucking. He's got a fleet of his own planes. He only, I mean, same with Bill Clinton. Any of these guys, you know, these guys all have. It's not like they're just taking a perk from a rich friend. Like, hey, you want to ride on my private jet? Come on, Bill Clinton. Bill Gates, et cetera, et cetera, any of the rest of these guys that have been connected to him. You know, these guys all have their own private jets. The only reason you're riding on Epstein's jets is because there's stuff going on on those planes while they're up in the air, too. That's probably where a lot of stuff went down. Not all of it, of course, but probably a great deal of it. Bill Gates. Well, we already knew what he was up to in other realms, but throwing him in there with the uh, with the pedophiles too. Well, I bet Alex Jones is having a goddamn coronary right now about that. He's probably gonna pop a blood vessel this week.
Epstein shipped a $100,000 cement truck to Pedophile Island three weeks before Damien Expose was released, paying for the machine up front so it would arrive quicker, as experts say he would have literally covered up evidence. <coughs> well, I mean, even if you pour Congress, I mean, what are you going to do? It did, yeah, I saw the other the f- drone photos from the... Uh, the temple part of the sex island and clearly somebody had or they've been in there somebody had been in there painting and doing i mean there i assume that's probably if you, this is just a this is just speculation on my part but i i would say if they're painting walls and they're putting up plaster and drywall and stuff and they've got cement trucks in there I mean, nobody's, you know, nobody said anything yet. At least there hasn't been anything much in the media about this. But you got to, I mean, you got to know that anytime you have sex trafficking and this kind of thing, I mean, I don't know. My speculation, my opinion is with that kind of stuff, refurbished stuff going on in there and they're clearly trying to cover up evidence there's a lot more than just um sex stuff going on i'm talking snuff that's the one thing nobody's really talked about yet there's gonna be body start showing up there's no way you're running that you're running that many bitches you know they're probably that probably that temple room was probably where they did you know because think about it you're catering to every sick and not even and not even in all cases sick i'm just saying you're you're catering to every perverted desire and dream of the richest people in the world and these people a lot of these people especially when you start getting up there in those upper echelons they're into snuff I mean, you know, they, these these guys want to fucking have sex. I mean, this is this. You, you think this is so sick? It's not happening. But I assure you, it is. These these fucking guys want to have sex with like a, a thirteen or fourteen year old girl, and they want to have they want to have their cock in them, right? And right at the point when they're when they're about to blow a nut, they want to fucking boom. Shoot them in the back of the head with a fucking gun or, or with a silencer or whatever, so that they clinch up on them right at the time they're about to ejaculate. And then they got to do something with the bodies. I mean, they can, you know, they can dissolve them in acid, or they, uh, you know, they can off. off they're at, you're out there when you're out there on a private island. Shit, that's fucking that's shark bait, baby. You don't even got to fucking. You want to get rid of a fuck? You, you're on an island out there, probably, you know, probably sharks infested in those waters. I mean, it's not hard to make a body disappear out there. But if they if they're painting walls and stuff like that, they're bringing in cement trucks. They're trying to cover up DNA evidence for sure. So, my speculation is is that that so called temple room that was a kill room. That's what I think. I think it was a kill room. I think that's why it was where it was which is kind of on the corner, north corner of the island, or just on a corner location, you know, closer to the water, whereas if you look where, like, the house and all that stuff was, it's kind of in the center of that island. But that temple thing is kind of out there on its own, kind of closer to the water. They may have even had piping inside there that, went out to the ocean even we we have no idea that's possible they could that's possible to do and when you look at the fact that uh it was our old buddy vladislav deronin and his company that created that island and we've already seen what they've been capable of creating both with the eye of horus house he built for naomi campbell and the uh, spaceship house there in uh in part of russia that they happen to be battling of all the guys battling over uh, something like that would be 
very easy to do. What else? It just, I, I just, I'm still blown away by how many of you people out there are Trump dick riders and think that there's nothing going on with Russia, and yet you're, for some odd reason, you're still listening to my show. I don't get that. I don't get that at all. Donald Trump hired the father of Jeffrey Epstein's sex slave Virginia Roberts as a maintenance man at Mar a Lago and wrote him a note calling him a most valuable employee. Um, yeah. But th again, this was back, it's, a, it's still a different world now. Yeah, we know Epstein was involved with Trump, and Trump was involved with Epstein and stuff like that. But as I, as I told you before, previously, that's when you, you saw this shift happen. And 100% and it had to do with the money laundering. We'll get more into that in a bit. Donald Trump signed a highly complimentary, complimentary letter of recommendation for the father of one of Jeffrey Epstein's sex slaves, the president wrote the note for Virginia Roberts' dad, Sky Roberts, in 2003 after he worked at Mar-a-Lago. Trump said Roberts was the most valuable employee and signed it with his distinctive signature. He also noted that Roberts, who was relocating to Colorado, would be eligible for rehire where he were he to return to Florida. The document shows another connection between Epstein and Trump, who were reportedly each other's wingmen. The two partied together in the 1990s, and Trump was called Epstein, a terrific guy, was there believed to have fallen out because Epstein was accused of sexually assaulting a girl at Mar-a-Lago. No, that had nothing to do with it. That wasn't why they fell out. It had to do with the money laundering. Um, here's some more info. Concerning that... And this shows you also beyond any shadow of a doubt. I want, to, I want to read this information for you. This also proves beyond any shadow of a doubt. This is information pertaining to Trump and Epstein's business deals. And these are the deals that they did that show the proof of the money laundering that was going on. And it also shows connections to the Russian mafia elements that we were discussing, including one of the individuals we talked about quite a bit that's connected to all this, Dmitry Rybolev, and we talked about him. So here we go. 1985, Trump's sister buys 1125 South Ocean Boulevard for $11.5 million. Trump buys Mar-a-Lago for $15 million to $20 million on the same day. Epstein will tell a journalist he underwrote one or both of those purchases. Epstein's friend Wexner buys nearby North County Road property, which he sells three years later for almost exactly $11.5 million. Interesting that both Trump would buy 11, or Trump's sister would buy 1125 South Ocean Boulevard for $11.5 million. Trump buys Mar a Lago for 15 to $20 million on the same day. And then ex Dean's friend Wexner buys nearby North County Road property, which he sells three years later for almost exactly 11.5 million. 19 years pass, 2004. Trump buys 1125 South Ocean Boulevard back from his sister for $11.5 million. Huh. No, no appreciation, no depreciation over 19 years for a high value piece of real estate like that? Nah, nah. Trump and Epstein fight to buy Wexner's old North County Road home. Wexner's North County Road home ends up selling for many millions more than it should have because of Trump's and Epstein's bidding war. So they, they, they staged a fucking bidding battle to drive the price up so they could both benefit. It's money laundering 101. New York Times will report that Trump and Epstein have a falling out in 2004 over a quote-unquote failed business arrangement. Nothing to do with, oh, he assaulted, he assaulted some girl at Mar-a-Lago. No. 
Two weeks after Trump angrily outbids Epstein, someone drops a dime on Epstein to the police about underage girls. Ah, see? It seems like, see, Epstein, that's what I'm, this is what I've been telling you. Epstein fucked him over on the money laundering deal. That's the whole quote unquote failed business arrangement. And again, remember what I told you about? Let's see, who are you going to go to? Who are you going to call? You ain't going to call, call Ghostbusters. You ain't going to call the fucking feds. You ain't going to call the police. You know? Trump can't, there's nobody Trump can go to and say, Epstein ripped me off. He was supposed to launder some money for me and he didn't do it. And he ripped me off. There's nothing he can do. But then he sees him, the underage girl stuff at Mar Lago. Then he goes and drops a dime on him. Mm. Four years pass during which Trump tries unsuccessfully to sell the North County Road address he overpaid for by millions just to add, outbid Epstein. 2008, a Russian oligarch, Dmitry Rybolov, buys the North County Road property for $95 million. More than twice what Trump paid for it. Trump had no other offers, so Rybolov needlessly overpaid. It's the largest amount ever paid for a home in the United States. 2016, Rivalov's plane meets Trump's twice immediately before the 2016 election. 2017, Epstein's representative says that Trump meets with Epstein at Epstein's house on December 23rd or 24th while Rivalov's plane is in Miami. And you know who else owns big properties in uh, Miami too, right? Along with that, that they don't mention here. Our, our boy, Vladislav Doronin. Doronin, yeah. He owns property there as well. These guys are just, that's how, see how they're doing that? Swapping those properties around, all that weird stuff with the, with the amounts. You know, I saw something weird. This was probably about 10 years or so ago. I was doing research on Alex Jones and I was looking in, uh, it's you know, it's information's out there it's freely available but uh it was like online tax records and documents um for like alex jones and his dad and all these they own like a bunch of properties all around Austin, a bunch of different houses ones that alex jones lived in for a while and then didn't live in for a while and his ex-wife lived in just tons of ones but there was one in particular and I remember back around that time that Alex had uh, Willie Nelson on his show. And he interviewed him. And there was a weird transaction thing on there to where Alex Jones and his dad sold. This isn't like this would have been like 2008, 2009. Alex Jones and Alex Jones' father sold a house in Austin to Willie Nelson for something like, I think it was $10 or something. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that usually the kind of thing that you do? Like, you know, like, like if you're, you're sending something through customs, you know, and you, you know, you don't want to put the real amount on there because they're going to charge you more depending on how much it's worth. So you say it's worth $10 or something. And don't people do the same thing like when someone gives them a car? Like your grandmother, you know, she can't drive anymore, so she gives you her car and it's fucking sweet. And then you go to get the title changed over in your name and they ask you how much you paid for the car. And if you say it was a gift, it's like a high certain amount. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't remember how much it is now, but it's a, it's a high amount. It's that gift tax thing and all that. But if you put on there that you bought it for $20 or $10, then you only have to, you know, and you sold it secondhand or, or you gave it to someone as a gift, then, you know, you don't have to pay that a, a smaller amount of fee. I'd never seen someone do it on a house before. I don't know what that, I didn't at the time know what that meant. I just noticed that there was a lot of weird stuff like that with Alex Jones and his father and real estate stuff and, and you know, he never talked about that on his show. It's like, oh, okay, now we know why. 
you know, what was what what sort of shady deal was Willie Nelson doing with with Alex Jones, and why did Alex Jones and his dad basically give him a house in Austin? I don't care if they put down. I mean, who nobody's going to sell you a fucking house in Austin for ten goddamn dollars. I don't give a fuck if it's a fucking shack. That's some when you see that kind of thing on the books. That is some sort of, you know, money laundering deal, a drug deal, something. But this is exactly what's going on here with the Epstein thing. And Trump, these guys have been moving around properties. That's that's why the, all of a sudden the, the Russian oligarch guys are all of a sudden coming in and buying up all these properties. No, it's not because they're coming in and buying up all these properties all of a sudden just because they want to own these properties. They're gaining these things through the machinations of this whole worldwide trillion dollar multi-trillion dollar money laundry scheme that the russian oligarchs happen to be at the top of <laughs> i mean this is just this again we haven't even scratched the surface yet you guys have no idea There's, I, I got pages and pages of documents pages of documents I've, I've got the whole history of the Russian oligarchs going back to the very beginning. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you. And this is why so many people are scared. This is why you're getting just a, not a, not a bunch, but just a handful of these trolls and haters. And, uh, because they know, they know what I got. They've been hoping for a long time. We're never gonna, I wasn't never gonna put all this together. Now I have not because they're scared. Listen, I fucked up a lot of people when I came out with my CMP information, and I haven't felt like this and been and had this kind of feeling since that time, where I'm getting a real indicator from a lot. A lot of people are really scared, and you know what? You fucking better be. You fucking better be. Let me tell you something. I took down a lot of people with the CMP stuff. I, I I did. I ruined a lot of careers. There are a lot of people out there that couldn't do radio shows anymore. Had to quit their radio shows and did. After I came out with the CMP info with uh, the Secret Right Volume One, um, this is going to make that look like tiddlywinks. Just here to tell you right now, and that's why a lot of people are scared. Because once I get all this information collated, put together, and and out there for you, and you're able to see this for yourself. There's a lot of people, who, they're not going to have platforms anymore. They're not going to have, there are a lot of so-called truthers and, and other, everybody else out there, they're not going to have platforms anymore. Because they're going to be exposed for their connections to this, and at least for their complicity. There's going to be a lot of people that aren't going to aren't gonna be able to, they're going to be out of business. Fact. That's a fact. So keep on hating, keep on trying to deny it. I haven't even got up here and told you a, uh, even a fucking cunt hair of what we have. I'm when I say when I use the term "dead to rights," I'm gonna use it lightly. It's dead to rights. It's all coming down with this new info. Get ready. Let me see what else we got here. Oh, give me a second. Oh, yeah, the uh, the other one I forgot to mention, the Epstein, Epstein thing was... Uh, Autopsy reportedly shows multiple broken neck bones. As unfounded conspiracy theories continue to swirl about Jeffrey Epstein's jail cell death, the Washington Post reported a curious detail said to be from the accused sex traffickers autopsy report. The paper signing two p people familiar with the report's findings said Epstein sustained multiple breaks in his neck bones 
including his hyoid bone, a horseshoe-shaped bone, which in men is located near the Adam's apple. Such breaks can occur in those who hang themselves, particularly if they are older, according to forensic experts and studies on the subject. But they are more common in victims of homicide by strangulation. So that's the newest thing here that they're saying. That's the newest theory. Um, again, the, the idea, uh, I just, I can't wrap my mind around it. I just can't. It's, it's, it's insane to me. And that's on me. You know, you, you don't, you don't have to believe that aspect of it if you don't want to believe it. But for me, I just can't, I, there's just nothing in me that tells me he's dead. Call it gut instinct, call it uh, what you want. And you don't have to agree with me on that. The other stuff that, that I'm presenting, the Russia stuff, listen, that's, it, it's irrefutable. Once you see the documentation, you see all, it's irrefutable. This kind of thing, this, this is an opinion. You know, and my opinion is there's just nothing in me that says that dude is dead. But the, but here's the, here's the other thing though is the people that try to say any of this, whether no matter what you believe, whether you believe he was murdered or whether you believe his death was faked. That's irrelevant to the idea that some people want to want you to believe, which is that neither one of those is possible. And neither one's just like the people that say, Oh, the government couldn't, couldn't pull off any conspiracies because government can't do nothing. They ain't got their shit together. That's a shill explanation too. That's something only a dumbass who's never researched anything on their own would believe in or say. Uh, people, somebody like Joe Rogan or fucking Eddie Bravo or those fucking retards. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just, that is completely ridiculous. You want to talk about an unfounded conspiracy theory? The most, un the most <laughs> unfounded conspiracy theory about Epstein is that it wouldn't be possible for anyone be it the Mossad extraction team or uh, an FSB team or CIA team or whoever else anybody pick your poison pick your uh, scapegoat the idea it wouldn't be possible for anybody or anyone no matter who you believe to either a fake his death or B, murder him, and that the official story he hung himself was 100% the only truth, that's the most un unfounded conspiracy theory there is. Which is generally the case these days, isn't it? The most, un <laughs> the most unfounded conspiracy theory is generally the official story. Just like on 9-11. The most unfounded conspiracy theory about 9-11 is that 19 Arab hijackers with box cutters overpowered the most sophisticated air defense system in the world and flew air multiple airplanes into buildings without weapons. It just, I mean, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. And then it jet fuel me melts steel. What's so still some people will tell you is possible. Hilarious. So, Listen, it is very, very easy for all this stuff to be faked. And it's very, very easy for them to fake a death and still have a corpse that looks like Epstein. It sounds so ridiculous to people. And meanwhile, that, that stuff that you just dismiss as ridiculous has been going on for decades. And everybody just will just continue to think it's fiction because they watch TV and movies so therefore they think they know everything very very possible for them to have created a body and created falsified reports for the autopsy you know, it's been going on for years this is going I can't t I mean I can't even remember all the cases I've come across it um uh, you know, not to mention the JFK autopsy, Kurt Cobain's autopsy, uh, Tupac's autopsy, 
And that's really where you find the real truth is in the autopsies. So if there's something not rotten in Denmark when it comes to those things, generally that means there's something rotten in Denmark about the whole thing. Just like I told you about the whole Bill Cooper thing. That's where the, you know, that's where the whole real truth about Bill Cooper lies is in his, in his autopsy report. That guy fucking died from suicide by cop. And there's no question about it. If you read, read his autopsy report, it's clear. That shit was suicide by cop. He wanted to be shot. He knew he didn't have much time left. He was dying from multiple, multiple diseases. Let's see what else. Oh, what else we got? What else we got? Oh, yeah, the other, uh, he also, uh, Jeffrey Epstein was in great spirits prior to his death and even thought he'd be bailed out of jail telling his lawyer, I'll see you Sunday. Right. See, that's, that's, yeah, that's another thing. They want to make you believe people do. I've seen that same thing happen with some of these famous musicians. You know, like Chester Bennington. Yeah, he's fucking making plans and smiling and all happy and not in any way showing he's depressed at all or anything making plans and then he kills himself the next day and they want people to believe that's a common thing that happens it's not a common thing that happens when people kill themselves i, I don't even like talking about it man it's, it's horrible i've fucking been you know had friends of off themselves it's fucking terrible um man if you've ever if you've ever spent time around somebody and I have in the in short proximity to them taking their own life. There's um it's weird, man. It's really weird. It's almost like I, I, I can't even describe it. It's almost like they partially die or like their spirit. It's weird. It's almost like a part of them dies before their physical body does like they've just lost the will to live to the point to where it's like their part of them's gone already <coughs> people who have plans on 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 killing themselves are not i'll see you sunday man see you for the game Hey, yeah, I'll see you next week. Can't wait to go ride bikes with you on the trails next week. And people who are, are about to murder themselves are not making plans. And nobody's being an actor and acting happy. I don't give a fuck what narratives they try to spin to you in the media. Nobody's acting happy and all good. If someone's about to kill themselves, again, it's like they're already it's like they're already dead. And you can't, it's like a funk, a almost like a zombie funk you can't pull them out of. You can't get them. It's like they're emotionless. And from what I understand, it's because when someone makes a decision that they're going to end their own life, there's a strange physiological and chemical process. It's very, you can look this up. This is not bullshit. There's, there's a strange physiological and chemical process that goes on in the body, just like what happens after death. The body has automatic things that speed up decomposition and everything. It's built in there. You know, it's, it's built within us. And when someone's about to take their own life, the same sort of thing, once, they, once they've got it in their head, the body starts to, to recognize and understand that, and it starts to in some way shut down and prepare for, for because it already knows it's coming 
So somebody that's making plans and all happy, and then six hours later, they're dead. Nah. Nah. You can bet 100% of the time in those cases that that's, uh, that's foul play. Because it's been proven that there is a physiological thing, especially when people are premeditatively going to kill themselves. I mean, there are, there are cases where there is no premeditation to it. I'm not saying every case of suicide is, is premeditated, but a lot, oftentimes they are. Sure, there are cases where there probably was no premeditation where somebody just decided right then and there, but I'm going to kill myself and had not thought about it previously, you know, either by circumstances they're in or, you know, whatever it may be. Republican senator tells Bill Barr to rip up non-prosecution deal that covered Jeffrey Epstein before his death so co-conspirators have no safe harbor. Ben Sasse, a Republican senator, sent a letter to Attorney General Bill Barr on Tuesday demanding Jeffrey Epstein's plea deal be thrown out so investigations against potential co-conspirators can be pursued. In order to bring co- the co-conspirators to justice, the Department of Justice should rip up the non-prosecution, non-investigation agreement entered into by Epstein and the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern Jurisdiction of Florida in 2008. If the plea deal were invalidated, the Justice Department would then be able to go after four known co-conspirators and any other people who could have been involved in the Epstein sex trafficking deal. The plea deal made more than a decade ago helped Epstein sidestep sex trafficking charges at the time, protected his co-conspirators, and allowed him to serve only 13 months of an 18-month sentence in a county jail in Florida. So this will be interesting to see. And if it doesn't happen, it'll be interesting to see what other associates of his get whacked or don't get. Well, the thing about it is, if he, if he was whacked, here's the thing. If he was whacked, if he was murdered, there would already have been a stack of other bodies in the past week already stacking up. I can tell you that. These guys don't fuck around. And very rarely do they just do one whack at a time. If somebody's a threat to their shit to the point where they got to whack them, they start whacking everybody around that they were connected to as well. I mean, look at the Kennedy assassination. Look at all the all the people, man, e- even people who were just on the grassy knoll that day, mind their own business. Anybody that can't, I mean, pretty much anybody that's connected to anything, dude, they wiped them all. They wiped their mothers out. They'd wipe out everybody. Same thing with the mob. The fact that no other bodies have fell in the past week tells you right there he was not killed or eliminated for being a threat to anything or anybody. That has nothing to do with it, man. They want that money. So there's just, there's there again, the usual things that happen when somebody like that is whacked for those reasons just has not happened. See what else we got here. Oh, some of this stuff, I don't know. It's getting harder for me to just rehash all the same shit that I've talked about and gone over before, especially when it's stuff I talked about 10 years ago and nobody wanted to hear it. And now they're bringing it back up. And I'm like, man, you know, I was talking about in 2008, 2009, I was talking about the bioweapons labs at Fort Detrick, Maryland, and where, you know, the creation of stuff like Lyme disease. Now, all of a sudden here, everybody's like, oh, we, we, we think Lyme disease might be a bioweapon. Oh, geez, you think? They only admitted to that fucking decades ago. It came out of Fort Detrick bioweapons lab. 
Lyme disease is baffling, even to experts. But new insights are at last accumulating. Right. I get so sick of this. People acting like they don't know it, and you try to tell them what it is. Yeah, it's a, bio, it's a bioweapon. It was intentionally released by the military from the Fort Detrick Bioweapons Facility in Maryland. I mean, people are so, oh, maybe it was. And I saw an article a couple weeks ago. Oh, now the, the government's going to have to reveal whether it, it, it used bioweapons against the public. Well, we already know they have for years. Oh, yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier. Incredible drone footage reveals the details of Jeffrey Epstein's secluded pedophile island, including inside the mysterious temple, which has a fake door painted on the side. And, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can... The one thing you could see in there was a big old king size bed in that motherfucker. Yeah, the big door, that big, looks like a wooden door with like a giant latch on it. That part of it was fake. It is interesting, though, because there doesn't seem to apparently be. any doors other than that on it. That's what's interesting. Because there's a big door on that on that temple part. There's a big, that's the painted on door. Looks like a big door with a latch. And you go down there on the other side. And those are windows, kind of like bay windows that open up. Go around the other side. There's a big white. I'll try to zoom in on that. See, that doesn't have door handles on it either. And those, that's more like windows, bay windows too that open. Wait, I think that has... Let me scroll back here. Looks like there might be... Oh, come on. What the fuck? These articles drive me nuts sometimes. Let me hold on. Those are windows. There's the fake door. I thought that was maybe steps going on, but it's not. That's just part of it. There's there's no door on this thing. Interesting. Interesting. And it's kind of up on, on kind of like a rock mound, too. That motherfucker, I think they, they that's got underground access is what it is. I can't believe I never noticed this until now. There's no fucking doors on that thing. The dome's not on it either. It got blown off in a storm. We know that. But there are actual no doors on that building at all. Everything that's on it are just windows. And sure, I suppose you could just open up the windows and walk right in. But there's no... There's nothing with a door on it. There's no door handle. There's nothing with a locking mechanism. Yeah. There's probably underground access to that thing is what it is. Because the advantage of that would be if that was where you were doing the shadiest of the shady you know, there's not going to be any, there's not going to be satellite images of you, you know what I mean? Spy satellite footage, there's not going to be any footage of you or anything of anybody going in or out of that, that area. You see what I'm saying? You won't, you would never see somebody walking in to that so-called temple building or out of it because there's no doors on it. So any access to it would be strictly underground. So if you were doing something inside of it, and you wanted to exit out, you would know you would never be seen exiting out of the place or going into it. That'll probably all come out eventually. That is interesting. No fucking door. Hmm. That just gets weirder and weirder, doesn't it? Former cocaine kingpin 
who founded co-founded label Death Row Records with Suge Knight and signed music legends Dr. Dre, Tupac, and Snoop Dogg is set to be released from prison after 31 years behind bars. Oh, shit. Well, most everybody's dead. Anyway, now, anyway. But, I was going to say, probably going to be some bodies dropping from this. That dude got fucked. But, yeah, I mean, he was, that was one of many, many, many record labels. Many, many, specifically hip-hop record labels. But, it's not exclusive to hip-hop. I mean, uh, drug money's been laund- being, being laundered into the music industry is for decades, but there's, there is a, let's just say this in, in hip hop, there is a, uh, you know, there's an abundance. That's putting it lightly of record labels. Uh, death road is being one of them that were created from the proceeds of drug money, specifically Coke money, crack money in order to do just like what we talked about with uh, Epstein and Trump and all these real estate deals. Clean up that money and make it legitimate. Former cocaine kingpin Michael Harry O'Harris, who helped found Death Row Records, the label behind music legends Dr. Dre, Tupac Shakur, and Snoop Dogg, is said to be released from prison after 31 years behind bars. The former drug king helped to run a multi-million dollar rap empire from his cell after founding parent company for Death Row Records with a $1.5 million investment. Alongside his dealings with the cartels, Harris ran a string of successful legitimate businesses, including a theater company that gave actor Denzel Washington his first break. You see what I'm saying? I mean, that's, that, that's the whole thing with all this stuff, the, the distinctions. It's just interesting the distinctions that people make, you know. And I see this time and time again. It's just like I talked about a while back. I was I was talking about uh, Rick James. Rick James. Uh, Rick James' mother ran the numbers in uh, Buffalo, New York. The numbers like the like the lot the illegal lottery, like the mafia lottery, you know. It's like based on the mutual numbers from the racetrack. The the, the first day you, you know, you pick your number, you call in, whatever. Anyway. Rick James' mother ran the numbers, the illegal lottery for the mafia in uh in Buffalo, New York. And so when Rick James first started making his first records, he couldn't get anybody to sign him. And he went to his mother and told his mother what the deal was. His mother, this is even in the Mike Judge uh, Tales from the Tour Bus episode on Rick James. It's in there. I mean, I, I knew about it for years because I've read it's in the Rick James bi- uh, biography. It's, you know, it's in a bunch of stuff out there. But it, it's not a joke. His mother took him to the mob, took him to the mafia. They financed his first records, and he made the guys, the mafia guys, executive producers on the record. And he took off after that. You know, so whether it's these guys, you know, in bed with these Russians, or whether it's, you know, Denzel Washington getting his start from a fucking theater company that came from the sale of crack. Again, man. It's just, it's interesting uh, uh, about how, how many people, just how many people quote unquote make it because of the backing and the financing of, uh, of organized crime. These guys make the world go round and still you'll have little fucking uh, either idiots, dupes or disinfo agents, you know, crying about Rothschilds and Mossad agents and all the red bolt, man, these organized crime makes the world go round and has for years. And these guys, these Russian oligarchs, it's, I mean, these, you know, I talk, told you about the World Congress of Mountain Jews and, and how all these guys on the, on the tip top of the right wing side of uh, the Russian mafia, all the trace their origins back to these original Ashkenazis to, back to the original 
the Caucasus Mountains region, the 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 uh, cave whites. And yes, they're at war with that other with the other end of it. That is associated with the other end of the organized crime and which has to do with some of those more traditional ends that everybody has tried to blame on and say Jew, Jew, Jew on. Those guys are in bed with those mountain Jew guys too. Don't get don't get them wrong. They're all in bed together. But what makes those guys important is that you're talking about a group which only has two hundred and fifty thousand people total worldwide. They're only two hundred and fifty this is by their own numbers from their own internal numbers. So only two hundred and fifty thousand mountain Jews worldwide. As opposed to millions upon millions of every other kind of Jew. We're talking about a small amount of people from a small amount of bloodline and a group. I mean, the guy that started the World Congress of Mountain Jews was one of these Russian oligarch guys. He started the group in 2004, two, uh, 2003, 2004, whacked. He got whacked. They shot his ass to death. He was a Russian oligarch guy. He started the World Congress of Mountain Jews. And in 15 or 16 years, in a short time of being a group, they already have become an NGO, a non-governmental organization status. They got official status and voting status. They get status at the UN. The Pope has addressed them. It's because they're, that group may have only started in 2003, but their power and what they represent and what their bloodlines go back to trace back to the very beginnings. And so the other end of that The sort of the, I guess, the, the phony. It's difficult to explain all this. Because you've got Sephardics, you've got Ashkenazis, and then you've got these other guys. And these are a separate, completely different group. Yes, some of the other ones commingle in with some of the other groups. You'll see Ashkenazi over here with these guys. You'll see the Sephardics over here with the mountains you've got. Yes, all these guys interact, and all of them are valid, but you have factions, and these warring factions are the ones that these individual mafias, depending on what side they're on, all answer to. It's insane. And I love how some of you trolls and clowns are acting like this is something I want to believe. I, dude, I'm not wanting to believe this or or saying this because I want it to be true. I'm telling you because the fucking facts are there. Just because you won't do your own research on this is not my problem. But it's all coming out. It's all going to get put out there. And I'm working on uh, Naomi Campbell's birthday party part two. And uh, that's why I'll put a, a lot of the stuff that we've... Uh, found out about since part one i'll put a lot of the info in that then i'm going to do then i'm uh i'm continuing to work on spellcasters two and three once i get those out i'm moving on to the big film that's going to have all this info in it and let me tell you that's when you motherfuckers are d u n done uh Support donations this month, abysmal. It's been abysmal so far. We need your help. Our girl for the week is $400. Get yourself some downloads from the download shop. Get yourself one of those collections that has all my work in it. Uh, get a subscription to the ar- the members' archives so you can stay current with the shows and get them within minutes of them being posted. We also have a fundraiser going on to uh, raise cash to get a new computer if you want to contribute to that. Uh, but our goal by... Uh, Tomorrow or Saturday at the latest uh, for this week is four hundred dollars, and we haven't got anything towards that goal this week. So, four people, a hundred bucks each, or however else, just go and help and uh, pitch in what you can. Because I got to get back to work. I got too much work to do, and I barely even have time to get up here and do shows and updates for you. And I'll try to do as many as I can, guys. But you got to understand, right now I'm so fucking slammed with data. It's it's increasingly hard for me to do. A bunch of shows every week. You're probably going to get two or three, and that's going to be max. Um, but I've got so much data and so much information, so much to, to go through, and, and I'm trying to keep all this up in my head. 
I'm busy working on like three projects at one at once here. That's a little much. And uh, my poor, pathetic little brain doesn't need to be stretched thin worrying about paying the fucking internet bill and the power bill and all that shit. So help me out. Get yourself a stake in my work here. I can't do any of this without you. And please contribute any and everything you can in the next couple of days so I can stay focused on getting this work and getting these videos done and get these movies out because uh, it's a brand new day. And uh, we're about to flip the script and change the paradigm yet again. And those of you who are with me, I'm so excited for us to be together doing this and being here on this time on this planet for this revealing and this information that's about to come out. And uh, people have seen a little bit of what we can do. They're going to see even more of what we can do in the coming months. I promise you that. I love you guys. We'll see you next time. Please contribute what you can, all right? Thanks so much.